BioBalance HealthCast, episode 170, dealing with premature ejaculation. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's a, a bit sensitive and it's one that Kathy and her nurses get a lot of questions about from the men that come in. Her practice primarily focuses on treating women, but more and more men are beginning to come to her for the similar treatments uh, because they find her independently, but also because the women in their lives say, well, you know, you, you could use a little of this Now yourself. that I'm better. Yeah, now that I'm better. You a, need to go in. Let's check your own performance criteria. <laughs> yeah. And the performance criteria that we're going to talk about today is premature ejaculation, which is uh, awkward for men to talk about. Um, again, very often things that are awkward for men to talk about are awkward because of the cultural definitions of what being a man is and what machismo is. And, and so guys are reluctant to talk about things that have to do with their sexual performance or their sexual performance anxieties. It's taken a while for many of my patients to open up and start telling me about mm -hmm. some, uh, some of their issues. And this issue is particularly sensitive, and they have to get around to it. When, when they're younger, there's a lot of teasing, and there are a lot of jokes, you know, ready, fire, aim. Right, uh, and it's very that, common in young men. It's very common in all men mm -hmm. that this happens once, you know, now and then. Mm -hmm. It isn't something that never happens. I mean... Well, and, you know, the myth of across a crowded room, the perfect love occurs, and when you finally get together sexually, it all just works wonderfully, and there are bells and whistles, is a myth. Yeah, you you know. have to learn the rhythms That's of right. each other's bodies. Mm -hmm. You have to, to learn the pacing that works for both of you. Mm -hmm. And that is more learnable, A, if you pay attention, right. if you think about what you're doing and how the party is responding, and if you have good communication. If you're mm -hmm. able to say, that's uncomfortable for me, I need to slow down, I need to hurry up, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. and, and guys that suffer from premature ejaculation, sometimes that's driven by anxiety, mm -hmm. sometimes that's driven by an intense level of arousal that just floods them. It, it's like they, they have no range. It's on, off, and over. that's it. Yeah, and over. Uh, and, and so that's embarrassing. It is. And, and if sure you're dating a girl, <laughs> a number of years ago when I was first starting counseling people, one of the questions that came up regularly about if you're dating was what is the moral obligation to say, I might have herpes? Oh, you yeah. Know? So, mm -hmm. so, and there, there were actually uh, singles clubs that the admission requirement for mm -hmm. was that you had herpes so that it would relieve that anxiety mm -hmm. about approaching somebody and deciding to be sexual with somebody. Yeah, that's a huge risk. So, so, but that, that's a digression, but it's a kind mm -hmm. of thing that goes to the issue of communication. It goes to the issue of anxiety yes. around sex yes. and having anxiety produced in something that you should not have to have anxiety. Mm -hmm. I think, I call it stage fright. I think this is well. something that usually when we bring testosterone levels up, if someone's been mm -hmm. functional and then their testosterone level drops, oftentimes they hurry, hurry, hurry because they're afraid they're going to lose their erection. They also, so that makes them have premature ejaculation. Exactly. And, and you know, their the cultural issue about sex education. Do people, because they are physical animals, just innately know what to do to have sex? Uh, yeah, they can if get... If we were more animal-like, we probably would, but we've, we've mentally taken some of that stuff out and society's made us more inhibited about everything. Our culture certainly has and and so then there's a question of uh, sex versus intimacy or right. sex versus mm -hmm. sexual intimacy and how does one learn. For, for instance, one of the things that, that I've discovered in my work with men and couples uh, and in the research that I've read is that as men age, sex becomes more about intimacy and less about orgasm. Mm -hmm. When men are younger, they tend to frame it in terms of successful, mission accomplished 
uh, mm -hmm. and how many they had, how fast they could reload, how many partners they've had. I mean, they, they That's track true. Talking that, to young men is completely it. different than talking to older men. Yes. About the same subject. Yeah, about the same Their exact subject. Their goals are completely different, and they, they aren't interested in having sex for half an hour or an hour or, I mean, yeah. they're just interested in, so why would you do that? Yeah. I've yeah. had a couple of people say, well, and, and wait a I'm, second. And I'm okay. Why so do you why, have a problem? why do they want to do that? <laughs> I'm like, you just have to get older. Yeah. It's it's a matter of... Maturity. Yeah, maturity and, and, and education. Enjoy, enjoyment and, and intimacy. Yes. It's it's less an act and more of a, a binding and a bonding. But, but premature ejaculation can be a relational anxiety, intimacy concern. Mm -hmm. It also can be a physiological issue. Yes. And that's one of the reasons we work together. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a one-two mm -hmm. punch with what we offer in terms of the physiological, mechanical pieces mm -hmm. that you're going to talk yeah, about that's, today yeah, that's and uh, mm -hmm. the relational communicative pieces, the intimacy pieces mm -hmm. that, that we both talk about. Well, when I, when I talk to my patients, usually on things like this, they bring their wives with them yes. to talk about this and their wives are generally really quiet at first because mm -hmm. they want to let their husbands lay out the problem. And then they start kind of, when their husbands say, oh, it's not that big a deal, mm -hmm. then they, they push them to get help. They're mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, this is a big deal. I feel your anxiety. I, I know that this is not just about having sex. It's about feeling like a failure. In fact, recently I had, I had a patient say, I am not a failure in life. I'm a failure in sex. Wow. And he had this before he had his testosterone replaced. And mm -hmm. my belief is now he easily gets erections, but he's still in that same mindset. I gotta, it has to hurry up because I might, not, I might not keep the erection. Yeah, I need to be able to finish this. Otherwise, it's right. a failed attempt, and that'll be a blow to my ego. And he said, and he, said he told me, educated me, that every time is another blow that makes his ego oh, yeah. more damaged and mm -hmm. he gets less uh, self-confidence in mm -hmm. this. So then it happens again. It's a, f a fulfillment of his prophecy. Yeah. Even though I don't believe that physiologically he actually has that anymore. Right. Now it's, it's more an emotional thing. Now. Yes. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that will happen, even if his wife is incredibly compassionate and understanding and is saying... We'll work together on this. This mm -hmm. is a, a manageable or fixable issue. Mm -hmm. The guy will start to do what in my profession we call assumptive communications. He will start an interior monologue assuming that she is angry or disappointed, developing anxiety that maybe he doesn't or can't satisfy her, and if he doesn't or can't, she'll look elsewhere. And that builds right. a head of steam for him that increases his anxiety, decreases his performance issues. I mean, a, a lot of guys who have erection problems, and I want to make a distinction between erection problems and ejaculation. Right. They, they are connected events, but either end of that can can be non-functional right. or that's, dysfunctional. That's absolutely true. So once a, a guy becomes concerned about his ability to get an erection mm -hmm. or maintain an erection, when he's thinking about it, it's harder, far, yeah. sorry for the pun, but it's harder and harder to get an erection. So he has to get himself to a place where he's not tracking it. He's not standing off in the corner judging performance and holding up a 5 or a 7 or a 10 because it then it becomes not about intimacy. It becomes not about sex. It becomes about the score. Right. And, and one of the things that I know as a female is that that's not what we're really looking for. Yeah. I mean, on our we're, end of the deal... We're not in a porn movie here. <laughs> yeah, but on <laughs> our end that. of the deal is there's a lot of ways to show intimacy. There's a lot mm -hmm. of ways for women to have orgasms, mm -hmm. and it's not always by, by uh, having... Mutually timed traditional having, intercourse. You don't, even, you don't need an erection for it. Yeah. So for me talking to the patients and describing other things they can do sometimes takes some of the heat off of the men yeah. thinking, oh, when you get an erection, it's going to be gone in two minutes and that's well, it. Well, it opens a whole new paradigm for them to consider, you know, allowing themselves to reframe what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and traditionally, it's, it's a male blockage issue. I mean, the men are traditionally blocked from thinking that way about intimacy. Right. Because they grow up thinking it's about the, the climax, 
more than anything else. And, and some men are even, we, we're talking about premature ejaculation, but some men are very concerned that they don't have a lot of ejaculate, meaning the, the volume, the volume of, the, of ejaculate mm-hmm. isn't mm-hmm. there as it used to be because that does decrease with age. Right. So it's not necessary. You can still, your body you, still ejaculates. It's just not, there's not fluid that is ejaculating. You can have a fully satisfied sensory orgasm without producing any ejaculate at all. Yeah, and well, I mean, a lot of guys don't know that. That's true, and so, but if it's a concern to them, then it's a concern to me. Sure. And so there are some things you can do for that. One of the things is taking a supplement called L-arginine, and L-arginine not only helps growth hormone, which is why most people take it, but it helps the volume of ejaculate for men, and it helps vaginal wetness for women. Mm-hmm. So often I will. It's just an amino acid, but it will do this. It's not always in our food, so it's something I will ask them to just try this for a few months and see if that helps them with this the need they have even though I know that physically they don't have to produce mm-hmm. the fluid right I, if they concerned. think they do then I then I'm trying to help them with and that and that gets in the way of their being able to be in the moment and experience the connection because they're tracking the data points and part of them then gets split off and it's most difficult with type A guys Type A guys, I mean, they, I own this business and I tell people what to do and everything is, you know, I have everything happening in my life that's exactly the way I want it. Not that that's healthy, Mm -hmm. but it is the way it is. And then they come home and it's not working. Mm -hmm. That's horrifically embarrassing to them and it really eats at their self-esteem and everything. They don't feel as good at work. Because they feel like this, what they always have been able to do since they were a kid, mm-hmm. they can't do. So oftentimes there's, there is one medication or a group of medications that helps men not ejaculate for a period of time. In, in some ways, if n- people who don't have this issue take mm-hmm. this, then they, they have sex, but they can't, they can't have a climax. Right. So we take that side effect and we use it for men who have premature ejaculations, and it's in the group of antidepressants. So in many articles, they suggest Zoloft. In, me- in other articles, Wellbutrin. Mm-hmm. Then, there are, then there's another group called tricyclic antidepressants that I don't, I don't order because right. it's, it has so side many effects side effects. Those, yeah. And decrease in libido is the big one. So what I, I usually order is Zoloft or Wellbutrin, and you get the feedback from a lot of your clients what? that Wellbutrin is a better choice. Yes, more of... In my experience, more of my clients who are on Wellbutrin reported uh, less interference with sexual desire and sexual performance. The Zoloft uh, works some to inhibit premature ejaculation, Mm -hmm. but at the same time it works to inhibit sexual desire and sexual performance. And then we develop another problem. Yeah. We're trying to treat one problem, and then we've I've treated them with testosterone, which is kind of the basis. You have to have a normal testosterone mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. for this all to work well as you age. So that has to be done first. Then we go to the finer points like this. Well, and, and so whenever I know that one of my clients has taken an antidepressant, I talk to them about mm-hmm. the sexual impact of the antidepressant. Uh, to make them aware, you know, to anticipate that this will probably happen so that they can understand when it does happen that it's not a rejection of the partner. It's not not uh, loving the partner or wanting to be with the partner. It's a physiological malfunction, and it can happen in, in a couple of ways. One, and, I, and, I, and when I have an opportunity, I talk to both of them together. Mm-hmm. You know, the guy's taking the antidepressant, but I'm talking to the, the man and, and, and the it wife. Is a couple or the wife shoot. is taking the antidepressant. I'm talking to the man and the mm-hmm. wife. Because part of what happens is there's a very gradual diminishment of sexual desire. Mm-hmm. And so you don't feel, oh, you know, what are we doing tonight? It, right. it doesn't come from within you. So your partner needs to know this medicine that you're on, it, it's kind of like beta blockers for heart attacks. You know, This is mm-hmm. going to diminish your arousal awareness. So right. then the partner has a responsibility to, to know initiate. this doesn't mean you don't want me and you don't love me. Mm-hmm. But what it does mean, if I'm sitting here waiting on you, I'm screaming in my head, make love to me or touch me or whatever, that's not happening. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. So I need to be able to talk to you to say, I would like to try to be, you know, connected tonight. I would, what do you think about later this evening? You know, can, mm -hmm. what can we do? And, and you start to build an awareness and an energy and a drive towards an opportunity to have sex. So that's, that's the first piece of and, it. And my piece of it is to, to make sure the wife is fine, that yes. her testosterone is fine and that she has desire and that she knows that in this society, it's okay to initiate. Yes. It's okay to say, hey, honey, let's go. Yeah. You know, and usually once there's some stimulation, then that there's takes response. over that no desire right. for, from either party. I've heard this from both sides. Yeah, yeah I have too. That they, some, one of the p patients doesn't have sexual desire, but the once they get going, that's how they say it. Once I get going, right. it's fine. So that's kind of years of a relationship usually. and Well, well it's fine to a point. And again, with mm -hmm. the Zoloft more than the Wellbutrin, but with the Zoloft, there are times when you're going like gangbusters and it's like somebody turns the light off. It's like just at that moment, whether you're near to finishing or not, it suddenly all goes away. Boom. And, and so we can use this partner. drug for certain people, and yeah. for other people, it's not the best thing to use. So and we right. have to try or, another antidepressant. Or you have to use it with awareness and say, there's not going to be 100% success on this. You know, you can get better than you have been, mm -hmm. but you still have to understand, communicate, be aware, work at it. And you have right. to frame it appropriately for all those things. I go to work. I have to work. I have to come home. I've got to work at sex. I mean, I got yeah. too much work oh, to do. I yeah. I mean, but that's after a while, it pays off. Yes. It doesn't seem like work. And after a while, both partners become in sync. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's the joy of what I do. Yeah. When they come back in and they're like, yes, it's all working. Everything's great. You know, I've, I'm not worried about this anymore. I've accepted that every once in a while. Yeah. I'll have a premature ejaculation. So what? I figured out other things to but, do. But you know what? There are other things to do if you don't have an erection. There are other ways to understand what happens if you don't have ejaculate. But there are some behavioral steps that you can do in mm -hmm. addition to the medicine yes. Yes. To, to try to help improve performance. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is, is masturbation. If you masturbate and you pay attention to yourself and you begin to, to monitor the, the rhythm that leads to a climax mm -hmm. and you interrupt that ribbon, rhythm just short of a climax mm -hmm. and you let it go away. And then you try to get it aroused again mm -hmm. and you get to a point and you stop. And you lo it, it's their, the technical term is systematic desensitization. Yeah. You do the same thing when you're having intercourse. If you get penetration, if you're having intercourse, and this is a concern that you're trying to fight off and you're with or without medicine. You work on uh, 30 seconds and stop, 45 seconds and stop. Just be still, just wait. I just and if, saw and if you an lose egg it, timer in my, you, in my brain. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just. But, it, but there, and, and it makes it more mechanical. It makes it less intimate, less flowing as a couple. Mm -hmm. But it can't, you can, teach your body. It's a biofeedback training mm -hmm. type of thing. You can teach your body to modify the problem flooding response, the on off over uh, right. and stretch that mm -hmm. time window. And, and, you know, maybe you're not going to be able to, to be a, a marathon athlete and go for hours, but you can go for more than 30 seconds. And let me reiterate, you have to still have to have your testosterone level normal. Yes. You still have to be off of certain blood pressure medications that may drop your blood pressure. You still have to be hydrated. All of those things that make for good sex, good er a good erection. Right. You have to have all of that, then the biofeedback, and then I mean, I, we have a, there's an app that um, called Brainwave, mm -hmm. which $2.50, you put in an iPod. Yeah, that's on the Apple. I think it's called something else for the Androids, but. Okay, so Brainwave's on Apple. I don't know the n yeah. other name, but it has a setting for certain sounds go into your earphones to decrease your anxiety. Mm -hmm. So before sex, you could spend 30 minutes yes. with your earphones in, mm -hmm. listening to this, it's kind of a weird noise, mm. but it hits your gamma waves and your alpha waves and your delta waves and it's all built to there's all kinds of things like concentration and you can but for this decreasing your anxiety is ideal because then everything seems to work better well and there are some additional physiological things uh, 
One is don't hold your breath. Right. When you hold your breath, it, it, it's kind of like when you're really straining to have a bowel movement. Mm -hmm. You hold your breath and you push all those muscles to try to get something then you to get happen. Hemorrhoids. But but if you do the same thing when you have an orgasm, if you hold your breath mm -hmm. to focus all the muscular energy on your abdomen and, and your uh, penis, then that helps blow that out in the same way. Don't, you don't do want it. If you have you premature need ejaculation issues, don't hold your breath. Do deep breathing. Mm -hmm. Regulate your breathing. Let your body do what it does. Don't force anything. Mm -hmm. Don't don't muscle up to try to get a conclusion. Some people have to learn to breathe too. And Andrew yeah. Weil has a wonderful CD about how to breathe. And and I mean seriously, some people don't have, know how to breathe. Right. I, I had an asthmatic father, so yeah. I breathe shallowly like he does. He did. Uh -huh. You know. I mean. You learn from your parents, you know, you kind of fit I, into that I have group. an uncle who's dying of chronic COPD, and he was a Navy diver, spent years on a submarine and then was a deep sea diver. And they taught him how to breathe when there was minimal air. And and he breathes with, a, it's a certain thing, I was just with him the other day, and, and he's, he's nearly terminal, but he... Uh, that's We're COPD to, breathing. That's what we teach people yeah. who have COPD with pursed lips, and and we 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 yeah. stretch your lungs. He would arch his back. That's thirty five years to old. I mean, thirty five yeah. years ago, I learned that when I was at the VA. Yeah. How to teach people with COPD how to breathe, and it's yeah. like breathing in through their nose and then out through yeah. kind right. of slowly right. letting the air out. Yeah. So. So so some of those techniques can be used for this as well. You just can't hold your breath. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then one last a, mm -hmm. a point, sometimes premature ejaculation has to do with friction on the glands, the head of the penis. Mm -hmm. And so if there's an issue with premature ejaculation, sometimes those individuals do better with the female on top position right. because there's more weight and constriction at the base of the penis mm -hmm. and less friction at the top of the penis. Right. And that allows uh, a greater window of tolerance before right. you get oversensitized and finish. Yeah, and that's that yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. So, so so there are medical communication, relationship and and uh, behavioral things that you can do to fight the issue of premature ejaculation. We we certainly haven't covered all of them, but hopefully we've given you some things to think about if that's a concern in your life and and at the end of the day, what I would say to you, if, if you have concerns about those things, certainly go to a physician and have your body checked out. There may be a mechanical issue. There may and be a secondarily, issue. talk, talk, talk to your partner about your anxieties, about what might help you or might not help you, about what they need so that they don't develop anxieties. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we don't want these relationships to crash and burn mm -hmm. because somebody didn't have the information they needed to get well. That's right. Talking is the hardest thing, Com yeah. communication. So thank you very much for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.